Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So now that Arrow is on break, it's time to start talking about season three. Some of the actors have even been talking about what is going on with their characters. So what I'm gonna do is a breakdown of what everyone's been saying and what it might mean. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Marvel and DC videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. This week is just extra special because of Days of Future Past, but feel free to leave me suggestions for future bonus videos. We have several, several weeks before season three of Arrow and season one of The Flash gets here. So what I'm going to do is just break these into 10 different things in no particular order. I'm just going to start with the fun stuff. Careful for spoilers from season two if you haven't seen it yet. But number one, Merlin will not be the main villain, but he will be sticking it to Team Arrow. You can think of him more as like an antagonist, and if we're lucky, an anti-hero. If you're not familiar with the term, it just means a bad guy that the writers want us to root for. And he's John Barrowman. How could you not root for him? Merlin and Oliver aren't going to be enemies like Slade and Oliver were. John Barrowman has a particular set of skills that's just a little bit different from Manu Bennett. Manu is just a much bigger, more physically imposing guy, you know, in the Schwarzenegger tradition. So we're going to see a lot more, say, you know, tense dinner scenes like Oliver had with Brother Blood. You know, the immovable object meets the unstoppable force for Chinese takeout. With that in mind, I recommend you go back and watch some of John Barrowman's, you know, Malcolm Merlin speeches from season one, particularly starting around episode 13 for the rest of that season. I don't want to do Manu any disservice, but John Barrowman is much closer to, say, like a Tom Hiddleston Loki villain than Bane. They both just have their specialties, and Manu just happens to be a little more smashy. Also, because Merlin no longer has any reason to hide his secret identity is the Dark Archer, he's going to be much more direct whenever he goes up against Team Arrow. Number two, Merlin will be getting a new Dark Archer costume. John Barrowman is a cast regular this season, which is a big upgrade from being a guest actor. It means he gets paid way more money and gets to be in a ton more episodes. He'll be one of the core characters, even more so than in season one. So naturally, when someone asked him what he wanted now that he was a cast regular and so much more important, he said a less claustrophobic costume. Like a black version of Oliver's costume. I wonder if he also meant black leather pants. I can already hear the jokes. Whatever his Dark Archer costume ends up being, it will be super cool. But plan on some new evil guy threads coming along. Number three, Felicity is going to get herself into a lot more trouble in the best possible way. When you have a superpowered boyfriend like The Flash, you get to take more risks. Just ask Lois Lane. She used to almost get killed like every week before DC retconned her relationship with Superman. We're also going to learn a lot more about Felicity's backstory. My early theories are that they're going to incorporate more of her comic book backstory, more elements from her in the comic books in just a very practical way, like the way they do with Laurel. You know, Laurel did not start out as the Black Canary, even though she's a character from the comics. For example, Felicity Smoke in the comics is the mother of one half of Firestorm. If you don't know who Firestorm is, he's the superhero that's made up of two different people in the Firestorm Matrix. It's like this timey-wimey construct whereby two people become one and they can just disassemble and reassemble matter into whatever they want. I don't see Arrow doing something like that anytime soon. It's a little bit crazy, but I do think that they'll include some Easter eggs from the Firestorm or maybe even the Justice League aspects of the comics, like tying her father and mother to other known organizations like Argus or Hive. Good or bad, there's no way Felicity's parents are going to be just boring normal people. Quentin Lance has the distinction of being the most normal dad on the show, most average guy, and no one is going to come swoop in and take that from him. Number four, Thea is going to train with Merlin. John Barrowman also talked about how Thea is going to learn to be tougher, you know, as she said during the finale. He wasn't explicit on how he was going to help her become tougher, but she will be physically and mentally training and possibly sticking it to Team Arrow and the people who have been lying to her for so long. That was her main complaint. That was why she left. Obviously, she was talking about Oliver and Roy, but I mostly expect her to be sticking it to Roy. So look forward to their relationship going to a really weird place. They still really care about each other, so whenever they fight, it'll be like Batman fighting Talia. Roy is way less cynical than Batman, but you know, you get the idea. A lot of you also been asking me about Thea taking on a comic book persona and suggesting Cheshire just because she bears a physical resemblance to her. I think it'll be a little bit more like Laurel's arc in season two. You know, not focusing on comic book names specifically, just showing her using weapons with more and more confidence. I think it's going to take Thea all season to even get close to a comic book persona, if that's what they're even doing with her. Think about how long it took Roy to get his mask, and no one has even called him by a superhero name yet. So he hasn't even gotten a persona. Although the producers have said that he's the Arsenal version of Roy Harper. Just no one on the show has said it to him out loud yet. Number five, Roy is going to be Arsenal full time. 
Now that the distraction, formerly known as Thea Queen, is out of his life, as far as he knows, he'll just do what every typical dude does and throw himself into his work so he won't have to think about her. Until she starts shooting arrows in his face. Because he gets to be Arsenal all season though, I expect them to give him some more Bloodhaven Nightwing stories. Or, you know, stories that existed in the Nightwing universe. Arrow does a really good job of taking comic book stories, or pieces of comic book stories, and repurposing them for the show. So, there aren't a lot of direct page-to-page -page adaptations, but I think Roy will be doing some very Nightwing-like things. I know everyone really wants Robbie Mel to come on the show and actually be Nightwing, though. But, number six, there will be no Nightwing or other big Batman characters. Nightwing is basically like the character that Roy inhabits right now. He's like Nightwing to Oliver's Batman. But I do think we're going to see another superhero from the comics. And the main villain will be someone from the comics, obviously. But I don't think we're going to be seeing a ton of Batman characters beyond what we've already seen on the show. Gotham on Fox is basically using all those people. And for another show to use them too, it would just be crazy. I'm not counting the League of Assassins in that group because Arrow already used them first. So Arrow kind of has a claim on them right now. Number seven, Laurel will get way closer to Black Canary. I don't want to say she's going to become Black Canary outright. She could always become White Canary. But Kate Cassidy said in a recent interview that she has been upping her workout regimen and she feels like Sarah in the finale passed the torch to Laurel whenever she gave her that jacket. So what I think that means is, is Laurel is just going to take a more proactive approach to crime fighting. Not necessarily as Black Canary, but I do think she'll take a much more active role in taking down Freak of the Week villains, you know, with her fists, as well as being a lawyer. I know a lot of you have also been asking about who's going to train Laurel to fight. Obviously, I think Oliver's the best person for that job, just in the same way he trained Roy. Number eight, there will be all kinds of crossovers with The Flash. Stephen Amell already confirmed he was in the pilot episode, as we saw in the Flash trailer, but there will be characters bouncing back and forth between both shows. Those are going to take two different forms. The most important kind, number one, will be episodes like the pilot and the two-parter on Arrow where they introduce Barry Allen. Those involve the lead characters, Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin, going on each other's shows. I'm only expecting that to happen in like two, maybe three episodes, including the pilot. It'll probably be like one big story broken into like two or three parts. Like the reason Oliver goes to Central City will also be the reason Barry comes to Starling City. The other kind of crossover, the second kind, will just be like episode 19, where secondary characters go on each other's shows, like Caitlin Snow and Cisco Ramon come to Starling. Or like Felicity goes to visit Barry, but Oliver doesn't go with her, and vice versa. It's not confirmed how many episodes of The Flash we're going to get, but I'm expecting a full season pickup with 23 episodes. So I only think maybe three or four of those total will be crossovers of varying degrees. And the same goes for Arrow. It's not going to be like a physical crossover every week, but do expect the characters to reference, you know, Flash characters and vice versa from Flash to Arrow. Number nine, a whole lot more Argus and Suicide Squad. Amanda Waller is a key component of Oliver's new flashback, so naturally she has to become a bigger part of his present day story. And where there's Amanda Waller, there's Suicide Squad. Plus, Diggle and Lila are having a baby. I think that pregnancy is probably going to take most of the season to happen. It just seems like her going into labor during the climax of the season would be like a good story beat to hit. Oliver's Child, on the other hand, is a bit of a wild card. I know a lot of you think that that was just kind of a throwaway moment meant to show how Moira cared about her children, that she was a good person. But I do think there's a good chance, because he's growing up in Central City, that he'll be part of, you know, future Flash crossovers. I'm not expecting to see him a lot, though. But fingers crossed that we get a casting announcement for a seven-year-old looking actor on the show. I'm expecting Stephen Amell to get so many questions about this at Comic-Con, so we'll probably get a little clarification. And number 10, the new Big Bad will be a big departure from what Slade's character was. Stephen Amell was teasing the new villain by comparing them to Slade. He didn't say male or female. He said that where Slade had been omnipresent, meaning he'd been everywhere at the same time, this new villain would be much less so. That was literally what he said. I think what he meant was, is that, you know, you had Slade who existed at all points in time in the story. He was all up in Team Arrow's face in the present, and he was a core part of Oliver's time on the island. So in season two, there was really never a moment when Slade wasn't right next to him physically or watching him from a distance. So the new villain is probably going to be someone that Oliver may have heard about, but hasn't met yet in the present day. Also someone who isn't quite as personally tied to him as Slade was. Based on that, we can eliminate Merlin, because he's almost close enough to be Oliver's father, and through Thea now, they're related by blood. I also think when Stephen Amell said the villain will not be omnipresent, he also was kind of 
speaking metaphorically, as in this will not be like a big mega organization, the villain will still be one person. I do expect them to stick with tradition and use someone from the comics, but the list of viable threats that fit that bill is pretty small. There's Vandal Savage, Ra's al Ghul, Dr. Light, Amanda Waller, that'd be a twist, China White, and Maxwell Lord. All those villains have, you know, fairly practically looking powers, like it wouldn't require crazy special effects to show them on screen. Dr. Light, for instance, would be a great way for them to connect Arrow and Flash in the finales. And even though Zoom is the big bad on Flash, technically, I think it's possible that they could put off a showdown between him and Barry till season two. Like, I don't expect Rick Kuznet to leave the show after season one. I think it'll be more like a Merlin thing. But now it's your turn. Let me know, who do you think this villain is going to be in season three? Remember, it has to be someone who's common to both Arrow and the Flash universes, or at least the Justice League universe. And quick update on my schedule, I'm going to be traveling over the next couple of days. I'm still going to do the Q&A, so be sure to subscribe to get that, leave me all your questions. And I'll be doing a Days of Future Past video. There's a new trailer for Marvel's Big Hero 6, actually it's a Disney movie. It's like the first animated movie that Disney's doing based on Marvel characters since they bought the company. I'll try and do a trailer video for that tomorrow too. Right now, click here for my breakdown of the Flash trailer and click here to get that Q&A video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.